Hey guys, how are you doing? So as you see, I have some array here of a kind of regular folding knives, you know, some stuff that a lot of us carry, stuff like paramilitary tool. Uh, this is just what I carry now nowadays. You know, people who even carry stuff like Spartan, even bigger than, uh, than Spartan in their pockets as their regular EDC folder. Now, a lot of us, you know, since, since the big boom of big folding knives, good folding knives, they're getting bigger and better. A lot of us carry this stuff in the pocket and uh, they are getting bigger and better. But one thing with what they don't get better at is cutting. A lot of the stuff is just getting thicker and more, more sturdier. But they don't actually often, they don't, they don't make them cut better. They actually cut worse. And one of the things what I always carry with me is pretty much always, I always carry a small knife. I generally prefer smaller EDC folders to begin with, but I still carry a small pocket knife. You know, pocket knives like our fathers, like some of you guys grew up with, you know, nothing, fa no fancy locks, nothing, nothing crazy, you know, stuff like this. You know, a lot of you guys, the older generation or a lot of your fathers, here in state grew up with stuff like this, one of these, you know, little back lugs or, uh, or uh, uh, what are these called, um, slip joints, back knives, small, elegant, you know, gentleman folder that's been in your, in your or your father's pocket forever. That's what we grew up with. Now in Europe, a lot of people know Opinels or Victorian Oxys. You know, those are the knives we grew up in, in with in Europe. Uh, the luckier ones that been in the uh, western part of Europe. The less luckier st people in Europe, the Eastern Europe, we really had mostly stuff like this, you know, this is kind of very, very traditional thing, what we grew up with, it was called like fish, fish knife, just because of the obvious reasons, you see. And uh, even when I was younger, this was probably about the only thing you could buy, back in communism, you know, small knife like this, couple different sizes, there wasn't really much to choose from. Now, if you got your hands on Opinel, you were very lucky, you had to know somebody or, you know, it was kind of expensive because it was an import, you know, for, for the Eastern Europe, even though Slovakia is actually, like, in, right in the center of Europe, you were really lucky if you got your hands on stuff like Opinel, very, very popular knives, and I gotta urge you guys, you gotta try, try one of these, they are very inexpensive, especially if you, uh, this is the regular shape Opinel, they have all different sizes from little baby knives like this, really like a keychain, like a necklace thing, up to 10 inch folders. Still the same exact thing. This is a traditional one. They, they always have them in two different steels, uh, inox, which is uh, stainless steel, or regular carbon steel like this one. And then, then they have a couple, couple, let's call it like a sprint runs, you know, like a fancy versions with the fancy woods and stuff like that. Nowadays they actually came up with the plastic polymer handles, you know, to keep up with the trend of these lightweight, you know, indestructible knives. But still the same principle. Uh, you have a lot of stuff nowadays also still coming, coming from even the nowadays factories. They are just small gentleman folders, you know, to keep up with the people that still desire carrying these small little slip joints and a small little elegant looking knives. Often they are, very often they are the cheaper versions. Uh, sometimes you get something like this, you know, on the higher end of the of the price range. Nothing, nothing too expensive, but it's not the cheap, cheap little gentleman folder anymore. It's, you know, $100 knife or something like this, even more expensive. You have a good name on it still a little very very small very, dis very discreet very lightweight gentleman folder and uh, it's nothing cheap anymore but you still have a lot of these cheap stuff that you can buy and I always carry like I carried the dragonfly and this one for a very very long time just dropped in my pocket even though I had my regular you know knife clipped onto the pocket I still had one of these small ones dropped in and the reason why is because not every time you wanna when you want to cut something or open a box or use your knife not every time you wanna use the big stuff especially if you are, are actually one of the people that love to carry and love the big big knives there are situations where you don't wanna open this in public and you know cut whatever you need to cut 
or you don't want to hand this to somebody if somebody asks you hey do you have a knife can I use it you want to hand him something like this so that's why I carry a small little knife like this in my pocket just dropped in there somebody asks me over if I want to cut something in front of somebody I use one of these small ones you know it doesn't scare people doesn't get them frightened and if they have to use it you have less chance of you know them freaking out or cutting themselves uh, one of the very po you know I really like the Opinos they are super good nice there are a couple reasons they are very inexpensive this is actually Coogan's version they have a little different handle I customized this one a little bit you see I just you know had some fun with the drum sending drums and flame and uh, I work this one in so smooth when you buy Opinol it's actually pretty stiff you know it's nice stiff stiff knife the locking mechanism this one actually they actually have pretty cool locking mechanisms you can lock the knife in in close position so it doesn't open on you you can open it and then actually lock it in this little ring slides so you can lock it in and essentially it locks like a fixed blade one nice thing about Opinos is their grind. They have probably the thinnest grind out of all the knives you will ever, you know, buy out of the box. There's almost zero grind, but you know, no scandy or stuff like that. It's just like nice full flat all the way from the spine to the to the edge. And then there is a small micro bevel. They are never crazy sharp, but it takes very, very little effort to make these ridiculously sharp. Uh, not that it's worth it so much because the way this knife works when you close it the edge actually touches the wood inside but it's wood you know it's not like it's gonna dull the knife I don't know how crazy fast and when you work these knives in when you really like you know use them and play with them often this is what you can do with them you can just flick them open and close just watch your fingers but you can actually have very very quick effective little knife super light like for example this little one this is the model 7 I think this three and something inch blade very thin stock this thing weighs one ounce so it's a full size knife that I can really use hard because of the handle the way it's constructed and everything it's comfortable it's no tactical knife you know you don't have any any big pronounced finger chawl or anything for slipping but it's still a good knife, very good for food prep. Another thing, you don't want to use stuff, something like this even when you buy your own, buy yourself. You want to use, you don't want to use something like this if you don't have to for food prep. You want to use something nice and thin like this, much easier, much safer, much better. And uh, if you want to try this, if you want to, I highly recommend getting one of these. Even before the Victorinox, I think almost everybody has Victorinox, you know, stuff like this, like Cadet, very popular knife, very good knife. Uh, I still like the Vic I still like the Opino better than Victorinox. I have plenty of Victorinoxes, but I never actually carried one in my pocket. I have them in my in my gear, in my backpack and stuff. But I never actually carried one in my pocket, you know, as that small little gentleman folder. I don't know why is it. I think one uh, one of the reason is th that. Uh, I already have a multi-tool on my belt so maybe that's why and I just really need a small little cutting edge in my pocket beside the regular folding knife but I like this highly recommend this super fun super super cheap very good quality knives you know the handle is one piece you can have so much fun with it you know customizing it all that stuff and uh, it won't break the bank and you know if something has to happen to it if you have to abuse a knife for whatever reason, you're better off abusing something cheap like this instead of ruining your, you know, $100 folder. Another reason why to carry one of these small ones. So, guys, hope you enjoyed it. I mean, if you have anything else, like some other idea or some other knife that you've been carrying like this, in this situation, like the small little, you know, gentleman folder, I was never too big on this type of blade, so we will never really see, you know, the, the typical back lag or slip joints you know from back you know like toothpicks and stuff like that you will never really see it in my co collection but you will you will see a lot of lot of other things that somehow got my attention or have some kind of connection to me and you know can appeal to me so guys let me know what's your gentleman pocket knife of a choice and hope you enjoyed the video hope you maybe learned something from it and uh, thanks for watching, take care, stay safe and remember, 
Don't cut yourself. 